the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, today, on this Lord's Day, we celebrate this uh, special Mass in which we had the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. It is a very uh, compassionate episode here in the Gospel. As you heard, Jesus was near the city called Naim. And as soon as he was trying to step into the city, he saw a great multitude of the people carrying a young man who, was, uh, di who died, recently died. And uh, they saw the coffin and the bearers and also the mother of this man crying. Jesus was now moved to compassion, especially in seeing this mother. There is an important detail about the mother. This was a widow, and the, the son, dead, was the only son of this mother. The Gospel underlines Jesus' interior attitude. He was now looking at this woman uh, crying and uh, had pity on her. And uh, Jesus came near and touched the beer. Then everyone stood still and he said, young man, and uh, I tell you, get up. And the man rose from his coffin and uh, sat and started to, to speak. And of course, everyone was now uh, taken by this marvel at saying this great miracle accomplished by our Lord. And there is also another detail very important. Jesus gave the son to his mother. We can easily now imagine Jesus' interior feelings in uh, thinking of that moment on Calvary where his mother would, would be at the foot of the cross in uh, adoring the dead body of our Lord, but uh, uh, filled with compassion for this woman in thinking of his own mother, Jesus accomplished that miracle and gave the son back to his mother. In fact, he himself would accomplish the greatest miracle of his resurrection. And uh, the son, he himself, would be given back, first of all, to his mother. This is another important uh, tradition that we believe our Lord appeared first after his resurrection to his mother. This is an ancient tradition. And we can see some traces of this in today's Holy Gospel. Jesus then was uh, taken by this great love for the mother, looking at his mother, and accomplished the miracle, the miracle of this uh, young man's resurrection, we could say. There are three episodes in the Gospel about uh, this miracle raising from the dead people. And this is one of the case. There is also the Lazarus case. And there is also another girl uh, which was uh, resurrected by our Lord. But uh, in all these episodes of the Gospel, we can easily see an important teaching for everyone the miracle of a physical resurrection from the dead, the fact to be brought back to life is a teaching about another miracle which is accomplished even more often by our Lord. And this might be in our own lives, to be, uh, to be uh, restituted to life 
to spiritual life after being dead, spiritually dead because of sin. This is another miracle. And this miracle is uh, brought by our Lord many times, as St. Augustine, in a great convert, says, Jesus accomplishes this miracle thousand times. And uh, this happened, of course, also in our lives. We were dead, spiritually dead. And of course, when we think of this physical miracle, we now wonder at Jesus' capacity, Jesus' uh, capacity to, 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 to perform this miracle. But there is another miracle, which is a spiritual resurrection, which is even more important than this, because these people uh, that were brought back to life had to die anyway, again. But there is one resurrection there is one miracle, the spiritual resurrection, which is a miracle performed for life, for having life eternal. And this spiritual life given to us, which is the restitution of our own life integral, life is the most important miracle. And of this miracle, we have to think now. We actually were ourselves dead. When we commit a sin, we die. When that sin is grievous, when that sin is mortal, mortal means right this, it causes a spiritual death. And we still believe with the catechism that one single mortal sin can cause a spiritual eternal death which is hell, damnation. One single mortal sin, that is a sin against God's Ten Commandments, one of these commandments that are still binding us. These commandments have to be now observed and uh, we, we, of course, we Christians uh, uh, look at these commandments all these commandments as the very foundation of our moral life. But if we now sin against one of these commandments, we die spiritually. And this death is eternal because our life is eternal. The life we have received is immortal, but by baptism, by the grace of baptism, the immortal life that we received by our Creator is becoming uh, now spiritually immortal, supernaturally immortal. When we sin against God, we are condemned to eternal damnation. We condemn ourselves to eternal damnation. How is it possible that one single mortal sin can cause our eternal ruin. Is this not against God's infinite mercy? For one sin should I be condemned to eternal death, to eternal damnation? If we look at the same uh, aspect, at the same teaching from another angle, from the angle of good, we think of something great. For one act of love, for one act of perfect charity, we can get eternal life. One single act of love. This should also be against God's mercy, or better to say, against God's justice. But this means that each single act of our life matter. Our moral life is made by each single moral action, moral act. So nothing is uh, meaningless when we live. 
There, there is a theory nowadays, thought, unfortunately, even uh, in seminaries that teach that uh, we are in grace even if we commit a sin, but uh, we can be in grace and keep that grace if we do not deny God's existence. But if we, in the meantime, uh, now infringe one of the Ten Commandments, we can still be happy because we don't lose God's grace. We would be against God, so without grace, even only if we renounce God, if we say no to Him. This is the so-called uh, option, fundamental option, which is completely wrong. It denies the importance of each single moral act. It says, basically, that our life in its daily uh, uh, development has no importance at all to qualify a moral aspect of our living. No, we say, we believe, and we experience it that each single moral action counts, matters, is important. Then, in each single act of our life, moral life, we can either achieve already eternal life and be with God forever or rather be without Him, away from Him in hell. We decide of our eternal salvation or eternal damnation each day in each single act of our life. This is the mystery of freedom. Freedom is important, but freedom has its responsibility in each single action. So, my dear brethren, spiritual death is the teaching that we have today in the gospel. But God is merciful, of course, He is merciful, and in His infinite mercy, he gives us the opportunity to come out of this mortal state, to be now back into his life, into his divine spiritual life poured over to us in the sacrament of baptism, in the sacrament of penance. When we go to confession, we confess our sins, we uh, ask for forgiveness to have deserved that eternal punishment, and we get instead God's infinite love to have eternal life, to be in communion with Him once again. This is the resurrection, the resurrection, this miracle that we hear today in the gospel, the miracle of this young man raised to life, restituted to life, given back to his mother, Mother Church, the mother that welcomes us again in her uh, bosom to, so, so as to be able to be amongst the families of God. This is the great miracle that we receive when we go to confession, when we receive this spiritual life back into our lives. I would like to conclude, my dear brethren, by quoting St. Augustine, especially praying with St. Augustine. As you know, he was a great convert. He left behind his life of sin and came back to Jesus, to God, and he's praising God's mercy in his masterpiece, which is the Confessions, for being, for being delivered from eternal death and being brought back into life. How many times? He says thus, praying to God, I was once 
amongst the sinners whom you saved. To give others an example of your most uh, banning mercy, I shall declare your great favors. You saved me from the deepest pit of hell once, twice, thrice, hundred times, a thousand times. I was ever tending towards hell, and always you drew me back when you had so willed. You could have justly damned me a thousand times. You did not will to do so because you love souls and dissimulate the sins of men so that they may do penance. O oh Lord, most merciful in all your ways. We ask today, my dear brethren, for this grace to be able to do penance, to ask for forgiveness in order to avoid eternal death and to be raised to life and to be always in God's grace, God's eternal life. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.